Creative Babble. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Just a warning before we start the show. This episode contains explicit language and descriptions of suicide and child abuse. Pretty disturbing stuff. You've been warned. Claudia and David Rodriguez claim that they're being stalked by their former doctor's husband. I know, it makes no sense. But they've been dealing with this for more than three years now. This guy put a threat out to our home and he said, I'm in your neighborhood and I'm going to kill your family. I'm going to kill you. I'm tired of being silenced. I want to, I want, I want the story out about how, what can happen to the average family and how, how people can get, get away with it because law enforcement does not want to want to tackle it. And also what, what it can do to your mental health. I mean, it's affected me in, in a detrimental way. And, uh, I really, don't want anyone else to have to go through what I personally have gone through and what I've been accused of. Claudia is being accused of having Munchausen by proxy, where a patient purposely makes their child sick in order to gain attention. She's got a shunt in her brain from a misdiagnosis when she was an infant. Claudia says that her daughter, Chelsea, has a tube surgically inserted in her head in order to drain brain fluid. They didn't diagnose her correctly, and so by the time they figured out what was wrong with her, she had irreversible brain damage. But they reject these accusations, calling it victim blaming. The Rodriguez say they're just like any other family dealing with disabled kids. But today, it's all coming to a head. The detective on the case revealed that the Instagram accounts used to harass this family were created months before they were even patients of the doctor. And the IP addresses all point back to their house. We're going to listen in on the conversation with the detective. Plus, I recruit a cybersecurity expert to take a deep look at everyone involved with this case in order to find new evidence. I'm Javier Leyva, and this is Pretend. Stories about real people pretending to be someone else. Let's pick things up where we last left off. The detective on the case called Claudia and David, hoping to put an end to all this. Because when I spoke to the FBI, I mean, I don't know who this guy is. All I'm going with is what the evidence tells me and what I learned from experts, okay? And to... And you don't think there's any possibility that your daughter's doing this. Absolutely not. She cried. The detective is referring to Logan, their oldest daughter who suffers from depression. Did you know that there was stuff on your phone, your daughter's phone that the, that the postal inspector found that you, I don't know if you guys are aware of it. No. Like apps, apps and stuff that she's talking to other people. Did you know that? She, she told me that, but she said that they were old and she like used them maybe once or twice. Oh, he, he said they were pretty recent, recently deleted. Oh. I don't know if you're aware of that or not. Well, you're telling me the same thing that, you know, and I've interviewed him. He's telling me the same thing. He's like, no, I would never do this. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, and then every phone number comes back to nothing. 
other than the fo- other than the Instagram accounts, prior to people realizing how we track things, all came back to your modems in your house. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. But you know, okay, I'm gonna give and, you. And that has to be explained. I don't. And know. But you know someone what? getting in cahoots with someone before they even know who you are, it just doesn't make sense. You Can you agree to that? Can you agree with that? Them. Okay. I, I didn't know. But them. they don't. I know, but they don't know you either. And that's what. Right. That's why I'm having a hard time. Right. Right. This doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. But all I'm trying to tell you is that we are we're we're worn out. I am completely spent from this situation. The detectives seem fed up with all this. He feels that the Rodriguez are stalking the Gresmans and not the other way around. So we did open up a medical board complaint against Dr. I know. Okay, I know, you know. But when we got the results that everything was unfounded and and I was very upset, I got a message from allegedly asking me, how is the medical board case going? Ha, ha, ha. It's not funny. I'm not, believe me, I'm not laughing. Yeah, well, I'm just telling you, it's it's like he knows everything that's going on, mm-hmm. and then when things backfire on us because we can't get anywhere, he thinks it's friggin' hilarious and he's getting away with it. And I even asked him about the Washington thing. I said, "What are you? Why are you harassing people in Washington and trying to get me in trouble?" And he goes, he he, he said, "I joined a, a I joined a pregnancy group on Facebook and got called out for being a fake and a phony and pissed off a Muslim woman. So I tracked her down and threatened to kill her and uh, ordered pizza. Yeah, I did not know anything about that. The FBI did not tell us why they came to our home other than some activity was going on in Washington. Whoever this person is, I'm saying it's but whoever it is, knows an awful lot of information that I don't, I didn't know anything about. I mean, I guess the hard part I'm having Mm -hmm. is why you, I don't know. I'd like to know that myself. I don't know. I want to be left alone. That's the million dollar question. I I don't know. I, I, it's okay. Well, I've told you where I'm at with it. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just having a hard time trying to figure out why he would target you I don't know. and go through all this. I think the, the, the reason why is because she didn't, she doesn't, didn't, she grew to not like my wife. It's, and I, I remember. A, yeah, a, but it started before they were seeing you. Yeah. And I don't, I can't explain that because I didn't even know this doctor. And then something pissed her off, something pissed whoever off to have them say that she wanted to commit suicide back in March of 2019. And I'm not the one that made that call. I didn't even know anything about it. But the one that I, the Instagram account is the one that did. Right. And that's one of the first ones produced. And again, it shows it was started and turned off from your IP address. Let me interject here. In March of 2019, before the stalking started, a fake social media account alleging to belong to Dr. Gresman admitted to botching a child's surgery. The account also made references to a bomb threat and that Dr. Gresman was suicidal. This information was brought to the attention of the security team by a woman named Amber, whose identity was verified but had no affiliation with the hospital or with Dr. Gresman. The woman whose child was supposedly harmed during the surgery has never been found, and there's no indication that her child was ever even a patient of Dr. Gresman. Claudia can't explain the IP addresses, but she knows without a doubt that the messages are coming from Dr. Gresman's husband, John Gresman. So you basically are alleging that she goes home and tells him everything. He he, he told us that. This person has... Yeah, but I mean, how is he going to know that unless the doctor tells him? Exactly. Exactly. So you're saying that Dr. goes home and tells him everything? I think so. I think she tells him enough because he said she just wanted me to get rid of you guys. That's what he, those were his words. She didn't know that it was going to go this far. So even with everything that's going on. Right. I mean, he knows we're investigating it that he continue, would continue to do it. Well, he would stop while there was an active investigation. Things well, this thing's on. been going on for three years, obviously, right. and I've talked to him multiple occasions. 
he probably thinks it's over. No, I know for a fact they know it's not over. I'm, I'm okay. frustrated. I mean, do you think that they don't get pissed, that she doesn't get pissed off that CPS shows up to her house last month? All I can go with is what I know, and I have to prove that he's doing this, okay, or I have to prove that you're doing it. Okay, but here's the thing. When you say everyone, all I know is that and I are being harassed. I don't know who you mean by everyone. And I, and if you Well, you don't think that the not getting harassed if she has CPS showing up to her door and she's getting medical complaints made against her. Okay. Yes. She's getting death threats to her phone. I don't know that she we is. Don't, we know nothing about this. Yeah, I don't know anything okay, about so, death threats. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, it, she's not, you're not the only one who calls me. Oh, God. Okay, okay, well, I feel bad for her. We're all victims. If she's getting death threats and we're getting death threats, we are all being victimized by somebody. And it's not right. It's not right, including for her. It's not right. Yeah. And and I am not doing it. I know that you think that someone in my family is doing it, but we're not. I mean, my God, we moved. We put up our house of 20 years. We put it up for sale and, and got created distance. Do you think it's someone from your church? No. No. Really? I'm, I'm positive. Because I'm looking at Inspector B report and it says that he asked you about abuse by a church member as a possible motivation to sending the message you're, you're talking about and you me. replied yes she's good friends with his wife so yeah i talk about you're she's the one who was the detective is referring to an incident involving one of their children yeah that that dude is in prison yeah i get that but does he have friends at the church no 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 one ha- is friends with him anymore and no and that was 2006. But it isn't, it isn't beyond that someone from church would do this. It is beyond because nobody in our church would even know. I don't share. Well, you're assuming that. I mean, people can find a lot of stuff. Claudia says that no one at her church would know the details about her daughter Chelsea's medical condition. Only the doctor or someone close to her would know that. David tells the detective that it was the postal inspector who interrogated his daughter, Logan. She, he came up with the, 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 uh, his answer saying that did it because, because she was un- unhappy w- with the religion. And, I, and that's when I told him, I said, was in a hospital facility at the time some of this was going on, so it could not have been her. But he, he didn't want to hear that because he had already made up his mind. Well, I'm just telling you the things I know, and there's things that we look at. Mm-hmm. Like when he looked at her tablet, everything's nice and neat, and there's one, one app missing. There's a hole where, just, where one got deleted. And then he found stuff on her phone that you guys didn't know about that she's been using Text Me style apps. He looked through her her apps that that have been downloaded and all he found was all he found was maybe a texting app that that was an an old one that she put in a long long time ago is she there right now yeah she's right yeah there. okay well it's kind of hard for everyone when everyone's in the same room to answer questions does that make sense well here, here yeah, she we're, is we're, everybody's here that's what i'm talking about when he said there's no secrets in your house. It's like everyone's been listening to everything you've been talking about. So now everyone knows everything about everybody. Claudia and David handed over the phone to Logan, the Rodriguez's 31 year old daughter. I've never even met this doctor. I have no interest. I have no interest in, in doing any of this activity. So it can't, it can't possibly be me. Okay. Tell her what, what happened with the postal inspector. They interrogating. They went through apps that I haven't had in years, and and they weren't even the same apps that that this that that that, that are, are being used in this situation. They're not even the same the the same name of of the apps that are being used. And and I I got accused of of doing it when I when it's clearly not me. Okay, I appreciate you talking to me. I just wanted to say I I I've never even met this doctor. I I don't care about the situation at all. I just I just care about it stopping. Yeah, I do too. 
right. All right. Let me talk to your dad again. You know where I'm coming from? Mm hmm Okay. I don't really care who it is. Not that I don't care, but I don't care if it's him, you, whoever. Okay. All I can do is go with what the evidence follows. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, but I, I okay. Would say- I don't go off on I don't go off on hunches because hunches are usually wrong, and they have to be proven. Somebody's not telling the truth, and it's not us. Well, that's for sure, and that usually happens at every investigation. Right. Someone's not telling the truth. Right. The conversation with the detective lasted almost an hour. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for having right. me back. You're welcome. Have yeah. a good day. You too. Bye. Bye. Nothing came out of the call with the detective. The case is still considered closed. In order to move this case forward, we're going to need to find new evidence. I recruited the help of a white hat. A white hat is an ethical hacker. This person can use publicly available information to find everything about you. This guy serves the dark web just for kicks. What can this ethical hacker tell us about the suspects involved in this case? I just got off the phone with our ethical hacker. You remember I was going to talk to our ethical yeah. hacker? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I basically gave him a rundown of the story, all the information that I, I could on this right. case. If he's doing this, this guy's going to figure it out. Okay. Yeah. So he's going to uh, just full transparency. He's going to look into you. He's going to look into. Good. He's going to look into. I mean, he's going to look into everybody. Good. Okay. Awesome. And he's just going to find suspicious activity. Good, and good, 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 good. Fantastic. So, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is a big deal. Okay. Not only. I know. I'm so excited. This guy knows what he's talking about. He's worked at an internet service provider. He knows what can be done. What can, He knows everything about IP. All the stuff that you and I don't know about, he knows about. Right. Okay. Okay. And, good. and he's able to explain it in a very clear way. Oh, my God. Who knows what he's going to find? Is he going to find out about that bank I robbed in 2000? Oh. <laughs> hey, you better not be hiding Jimmy Hoffa. That's what I'm <laughs> No, that's great, Javier. I'm so, ex- I'm so happy right now. Well, good. Oh I mean, this that's is amazing. Yeah. I mean, he's going to shake the trees and let's see what happens. God. If it's doing this or they could get arrested depending on what we find. Like, I hope so. But on the flip side, yeah. there's somebody in your house doing this and you don't know about it. This could maybe, God forbid, it's one of your kids and you don't know about it. I mean, who knows what's going to come out of this? Yeah, you know I, I mean? yeah, we understand the consequences, but I'm 100% positive that no one in my family is doing it. Yeah. Okay. There's All no right. way. Yeah, there's no way. I would be completely floored and stunned, and you would have to put me in a mental institution if it came back that one of these kids is that savvy, and nobody here is that savvy. No. Nobody in this house. That's that's a confusing thing about this whole thing, is that to to accomplish some of the things that he would have to be really savvy. I mean, like really, really savvy. Mm-hmm. We couldn't even figure out how to make a firewall with a router. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. I know nothing has been done yet, but I feel like maybe we're getting somewhere. And this is a huge step forward yeah. in the right direction. Well, let's hope. Let's hope. I know some of you at home have made up your minds. You probably think that the Rodriguez's are doing this to themselves. But if they are... Why would they be so excited about a hacker looking into their internet activity? Why would they want to piss off the cops? It just doesn't make sense. You can hear the genuine excitement in Claudia's voice. To me, it sounds like a woman desperately trying everything and anything to bring this case to a close. So I called up my hacker friend. My name is Michal Khan and I'm a cybersecurity professional. I work, I've worked in the industry for 20 plus years, and my specialization is open source intelligence and online investigations. This is fun. I mean, this was a, I like challenges. <laughs> this, this is a challenge for sure, man. It's such a crazy story, and I think you get it now. No, the more you dig into it, you're like, huh, I thought this was the suspect. Now all of them seem kind of shady, and there's no 
like evidence that you can point to and say, that's it, I got it. It's like, wow. <laughs> that's interesting that you say that because I feel like the IP addresses are pretty. Well, that is, I mean, there's certain facts that you can't deny, which are IP addresses, but then there's, you know, the stories, their, their versions, of course, people lie and stuff. I mean, I do this a lot to a point where I just look at the facts and I make my judgments based on facts, no more emotions, because that can like muddy everything. Um, so you have to have a pretty stone heart to do something like this. <laughs> and that's that's the problem that I'm having is that when I talk to the the couple, I I believe them because my emotions are wrapped mm. into I like them. But then I walk right. away and I can't explain any of this other than what's logical, which right. is that the IP addresses are coming from their houses. Yeah. And um you know, even all those things, what I've been trying to do is kind of fact check these things. Like, you know, the first thing was IP addresses. What's the source of the truth? The source is obviously the police report, which is fine. And then, you know, why? What's the motive? And even if it's the IP addresses, they have four kids in the house and two adults. Uh, which one of them is doing this? You know, the, the father could be playing innocent. It could be him. It could be the mother, split personality, the Two children have motive. Sex offender definitely has a motive. And the other girl definitely has something against their parents. And so it's like four major suspects right there. And then why they involve the doctor and their husband. And the husband also had something fishy because he had all these chat messages, which I couldn't look up because they were deleted. I'm like, oh, what kind of a person says That's this? That. Right. Yeah. But we don't know that those Twitter handles were his. You know I mean? Right. We don't know they're his and they came from the private investigator. And that's the thing. You're looking at this because I gave you two things. I gave you the timeline and then I gave mm -hmm. you the police report, right? Mm -hmm. The actual police report. Yeah. Yeah. If you look at the last document that we were sharing, the last page of that document, I actually posted a mind map. So if you scroll all the way down, yep. mm -hmm. uh, you'll see it. Um, that's the mind map that I create as I'm putting the facts together so that I can visualize the picture, the story. Michelle created a digital version of a suspect board, you know, like the ones that you see in the detective movies. But this mind map is much more sophisticated. It connects all the IP addresses, phone numbers, emails associated with each person. Basically, Michelle is trying to make a visual connection with all the people involved. And I've already started creating some connections, some dots and stuff to things that are verified. I'm like, okay, now I'm sure this is the phone number they're using because I found maybe five telephone numbers online. And one of them was like the one connected to their Gmail account, or it was part of a breach. They stayed in this hotel, the MGM hotel, a lot of them, and the MGM breach had their true cell phone numbers. Hackers like Michelle rely on data breaches in the dark web to collect usernames, passwords, social security numbers, you name it, from people like you and me. And it turns out that all of our suspects have their private information littered across the dark web. And then I pivoted off of those emails. I said, okay, where else have I seen this email in a breach? And there's an IP address in the breach. There's a passwords and those passwords reveal others. And then I found an SSID in her house. So the, the wireless SSID, which the investigator said that I, I saw that all of them were secure. Well, I figured out which one is hers. It's the SSID that says so that's definitely hers. An SSID is the name you use to identify your Wi-Fi router at home. So the SSID is the Wi-Fi address you see when you search for Wi-Fi names around you. And we call it technically the SSID. So these are like people who scan on the streets, everyone's Wi-Fi, and they just post it on the internet. So everything you see on the left, uh, on the social media accounts that were discovered, the fake accounts, all the phone numbers, I just put all those phone numbers down right now. Uh, same thing with all the Instagram accounts. None of them are active. I checked all of them and they've all been deactivated or deleted. But there is one thing that the, the search warrant or subpoena would have revealed, which would have been key. And I think you can go back and um, request that with the police officer. So the search warrant said that these phone numbers were tied to Pinger. Pinger is the company that owns TextNow, the app. So whoever was doing this had the app TextNow on their phone and Pinger owns it. There's Another piece of information that should have been in that data provided by Pinger, which is the the hardware ID of the phone that's used. So if they were using an Apple device, that ID ties to their 
Apple ID. And then you can take that ID and ask Apple, hey, uh, which one of your accounts was using this ID? Now you have a person, not just an IP address, because IP address means anyone in the home. Person means that exact phone. So you can actually narrow it down to who was using those VoIP numbers, which phone was using it. None of our suspects had any unusual number of devices registered under their names. All except for one, Logan, the oldest Rodriguez daughter. And this is why I kind of have a, a few phone types. If you go up or in the section for, she has like five devices. Now I wanted to ask you about that. How you, you can't really tell if those are active phones, right? No, these are devices that she used at She's some had point. At some point, yeah. the ones on Gmail are likely all active devices because Gmail is saying, which device do you want me to send that push notification to? So mm -hmm. those are all active or at least active till very recently. And then there's two other devices in the pictures you see. One is clearly a iPad. So you can send messages from an iPad and the other one is something else identified that phone. There's a, there's a Samsung picture that you put in there. Right. But just knowing that her age and she's a young girl having that many devices, it may be normal for her. It's not normal for me or my kids <laughs> or anyone I know to have five devices. Five devices doesn't sound like a lot. I know I have one laptop is for home and the other one's for work. So that's three total devices for me. What's odd about Logan's list of devices is that she has multiple active phones. Who really needs more than one or two phones? The postal inspector mm -hmm. checked her phone okay. and I think he did some sort of diagnostic or analysis on the phone and he realized that there was one app that was recently deleted. Now he couldn't tell which app it was. Oh, okay. And that was one phone though. Right. And she did not have the text now. text now. But this is interesting though, the fact that she has five phones. Out of all the things that you've been able to pull together, that seems like the most compelling evidence right. so far, right? It's not right, a it's slam like four dunk. Phones on a device. Right. right. It, but it's something that's pointing towards her, like, why does a child have uh, f and, uh, four or five devices? <laughs> and she's not a child. Yeah, she's not a child, though. Yeah. I know, but but that's yeah. interesting that even you, from like reading this, have now assumed that she's a child because she's almost like 30 or something, right? Like, what's her age? Yeah. She's, yeah, 30. Right. She's, she's 30. She's 30 years old. Yeah, she's not but the way that her mother talks about her, you would yeah. think that they were all like minors, right? right. Yeah, and that's kind of weird and awkward so you found a lot of interesting thing on the rodriguez family but it doesn't mm -hmm. seem like you found much of unusual activity from the doctor and her husband right no i i spent the whole day the first day just on the doctor and the husband and anyone who they're related to and it seemed there's they're pretty normal people they have a normal online presence from what i see right now they're pretty normal people, never seen anything outside of her profession, always medical stuff posted, medical profiles. She's not active on social media, neither is he. Uh, neither one are in any breaches that I could check with any other hidden accounts, none of that. Whereas the f was full of uh, so many details. So yeah, I mean, to me, they seemed pretty clean. Uh, and you know, did you do a, a criminal background check? I did. Them? Yeah, I did for both of them and um, don't believe I found anything, not even a traffic violation. So she's a doctor, there's an NPI number, there's emails, there's some breaches, and then G has normal online stuff. Yeah, I found I a picture of him, I found some emails of him, I found their home with their signature and stuff, so that's pretty clean. Yeah, you see, the thing is that I, I'm not an expert on stalking, but if you're a stalker, you most likely have stalked other people. Yeah, some people are very careful, but eventually they make mistakes somewhere. And I don't see any signs of mistakes anywhere, neither in breaches, nor shared passwords, nor any online activity or accounts. And I'm not taking into account stuff that's been deleted because I can't verify that that social media handle was his, the, the Twitter stuff right. where he's ranting and stuff. I'm ignoring that because that's not a fact to me, at least. This family doesn't know why somebody's doing this to them, but they swear up and down that it's not them and it's not their kids. So their only explanation is that this stalker worked at a 
internet service provider. And somehow he knows somebody who helped him modify or mask the IP in a way that it makes it look like the IP addresses are coming from their house. Is that a remote possibility? Not at all. I have never seen anything like that. And technically it's not possible without actually installing a piece of hardware at their home, which is basically a VPN concentrator. So somebody would have to log in through a VPN to their home so that their traffic emerges from their home. So anything they do from then on, they go to twitter.com, it looks like they went to Twitter from their home because they have this physical device in their house. So that's very close to impossible. For normal cases, that would never happen and you'd need physical access and they would see something like that. So I don't see that as a possibility in this case. What about the idea that, you know, you could drive past somebody's house and if they have a weak password or a recycled password on their home router that you could basically spoof the IP that way, is that possible? So I've done a lot of wireless cracking in my time and it's possible to crack weak passwords. If your Wi-Fi has a weak password, I can drive past your house, sit in a car for five minutes, collect some of the, the traffic that's going that's encrypted, go home, try to decrypt that traffic. And if it's a weak password, I can maybe decrypt it in half an hour, in an hour, if it's a simple password. And then now that I have the password, I, I'll have to go back in front of your house to connect to your Wi-Fi and then create social media accounts. But I still have to be right in front of your street and I have to be close enough so that the Wi-Fi signal is strong. But if their street doesn't get the signal strong enough, I'd literally have to stand on their doorstep and, and kind of uh, play around with social media and stuff and who has that much time on their hands. And uh, surely they would get noticed if they spend that much time in front of a house. And I've seen their street on Google Street Maps. It's a small street with not a lot of activity. And if you stand on that street for too long, you'll get noticed by some neighbor or themselves. And I'm wondering how the PI stood there for hours if they did to kind of catch that person who was going on a bicycle ride or whatever. I'm like, huh, where did the PI hide? Because I looked at the whole street. There's one or two trees. They would have had to hide in a neighbor's yard, front yard or something. I'm like, they're just sitting there in their car. That would be pretty shady. <laughs> yeah, she was able to identify that this dark person on a bicycle. Yeah. Is, yeah. But okay, but you are, <laughs> you are saying it is possible that... It's, he... it's possible if they're sitting right there or if it's a really good hacker a professional hacker they would plant a device in their front yard and they would take a device with like four or five antennas coming out it would be a fairly visible device and put it somewhere in front of their house so that that device connects to their wi-fi and the device connects through lte back to the hacker this way they get remote access to their network and that way it is possible but eventually they have to come and pick that device up or somebody would spot it if they leave it there for too long. So again, highly, highly unlikely. And this is this is only possible if someone paid them a lot of money to kind of, uh, you know, paid a hacker a lot of money to do this and they would have no fear of getting caught. Or if they were someone so important and, you know, a bounty on their head or whatever, they don't seem like falling under any of those categories. So... I highly doubt it's possible. Considering that the doctor and her husband didn't even know these people because right. they weren't even patients back then. Yeah, they didn't even know these people and no one else has motive to do something like this. I mean, if the IPs all came from the house, there's plenty of people in the house to kind of um, point fingers to. But what about the theory that John Gresman works at Cox Communication, the Rodriguez's internet service provider? Is it possible for someone who works at an ISP to make it look like messages are coming from inside the Rodriguez's house? You've worked at an ISP and you have you know that there's there are protocols in place, right? Right. To you can't just say, hey, traffic that goes to this house, let it reroute somewhere else. In order to do a simple route manipulation like that, you need you know signing off from your manager. You need to open up a ticket, do all those things. If someone's bypassing all of these things, then you know, if they're a rogue employee, let's say, they're eventually either going to get caught or they'll have some connection to this person or they're paid to do it. They'll get revealed. And nobody would would put so much on the line for something like this. Right. The reason why that doesn't hold water for me is that the guy was a writer producer in the marketing department at, mm. at this Cox Communications, and right. he wasn't even an employee there when these yeah. IP addresses were created. Right. So he's an employee a long time ago. Yeah. Right. 
Right. So, but I, I ask because, you know, we have to like rule that out. What's interesting is that the stalker originally created multiple Instagram accounts. That's how he would contact these people. Mm-hmm. As soon as the cops subpoenaed them and got the IP addresses, the stalker changed tactics and went with voice over IP numbers, changed strategy, right? Well, it means the stalker knew <laughs> that this is happening. Otherwise, how would a person sitting behind the internet creating these Instagram accounts know that they're being subpoenaed. Instagram users are not told that they're being subpoenaed. Now that you know what you know, knowing that the two different parties involved, could there be a third party involved? Or is it most likely one of these two? It's most likely one of these two. And if I were to pinpoint on obviously one family, it would be the family. And if I go deeper into that, it would, you know, I would have four suspects in this case. And in the mind map, I've highlighted them in red. It's either the parents or it's likely or but it's likely or who know enough about this and have enough motive. I would, that would be my guess. That would be my gut feeling and not the other side. I see no motive from the doctor's side or a third party. There's no involvement of a third party in in this conversation. I look at the evidence and the evidence points at their home and it's 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 their own doing. That's that's how I see it right now. And I'm just trying to find other w- ways. I'm I'm doing my research. I was actually trying to look for ways that it's not them and it actually is a third party stalker. I just could not find any evidence of this. No no factual evidence. It's it's just not there. I asked you how you found out about this. That's mm-hmm. a big red flag mm-hmm. too. They reached out to you because they listened to your podcast. Right. It's like, oh, we want to be popular. We want to be on this podcast. Right. <laughs> yeah, they're using you. Well, well, yeah, well, and trust me, like I actually told them multiple times that I wouldn't do this because I didn't see any value that my mm-hmm. podcast would add to their situation. I could only see my podcast making matters worse. If there really Mm -hmm. is a stalker out there, maybe with uh, somebody like you, I could pinpoint who the bad guy is. But here we're we're zeroing in back at this family. I see zero point why they want me to do this. The reason why I am doing it is that I'm changing all their names. So attention is what Mm -hmm. they're seeking. I'm neutering that. Not going to get it. Next time on Pretend, I'm going to talk to Logan and ask her about her multiple devices. Let's see how she explains that. You know, a lot of this is technical stuff that goes over my head, but I've spoken to multiple security experts and even people who have worked at internet service providers, and they all say the same thing. You can't spoof IP addresses. One expert said that no matter how hard somebody claims they can, they're lying. I even asked Michael Basil, who many of you remember from my How to Disappear series, and he had the same response. He says when it comes to masking an IP address, he echoed what Michal told me. It would be very difficult, but not impossible. I need to basically infiltrate their network. I need to be I need to break into their network to the point that I can have a connection to it. I can send traffic from it. It's not impossible. It's not likely, and I have not seen that very often. I've never seen someone go that far to try to make it look like the threat is coming from in the house so that the police, if they do investigate, will think it's coming from in the house. It just seems like a lot of unnecessary effort, which is causing me a little bit of hesitation to say that's what's happening. Right, right. And if you hear some hesitation in my voice, it's because I I don't yeah. buy this story either. Like something's not adding up at all. Well, I can say from my <laughs> end, I, I but I just I can't can say exp- from my end mm-hmm. that we have people contact us all the time who have these horrific stories of victims of different types of stalking that we later determine they made up themselves. And I I don't want to pretend that I understand the psychology of why people do that. And I also don't want to minimize the true victims out there who really are the victims of stalking. But it is a thing that we have seen a lot where people will make themselves victims for attention or whatever. And we, we determine that there's actually no offender. But again, I just don't want to minimize that that's a minority and that a lot of times we have really bad offenders who are doing these things. If you want to listen to the next episode right now, subscribe to Apple Plus on the Apple Podcast app or join Patreon. 
Subscribers get early episodes and bonus content. Okay, I'll talk to you guys next week. Creative Babble.